Without a doubt, the Winx Club has had a perplexing existence. It started as an Italian children's show in 2004, produced by the studio Rainbow SPA. It received a ton of marketing and developed a respectable following. It later had a revival through Nickelodeon, becoming an honorary Nicktoon. The show had many other exciting adventures, such as a strange live-action adaptation, a Disney lawsuit, a few stylistic changes, and a bunch of English dubs. The initial plot revolved around a fairy named Bloom who attended a magic school called Althea. She befriended a bunch of other fairies and they made up the group Winx, which fought evil using their own special powers. Every member of the original group was named after something that represented them. Bloom was starting a new beginning, Flora was into plants, Techna was into technology, Musa was into music, Stella... Season 2 introduced the character Aisha, also known as Layla in certain dubs. Season 4 also introduced Roxy, an infrequent member of the Winx. Now this was always an amusing show to me. With a likable cast, a friendly and colorful atmosphere, and an engaging storyline, I find myself going back to it every so often. To top it all off, a show as action-packed and story-driven as Winx Club can translate really well into a video game. So it's no surprise there's a wide variety of them, both for consoles and online. Over the years, many Winx Club games that once held a decent player base have been lost to the ages. Thankfully, dedicated fans have worked to preserve them, and many are still accessible through one way or another. I went through a few, and I think I found one that's worthy of discussion, for a variety of reasons, both good and bad. This is called Do You Believix? Believix was the name of the fairy form introduced in Season 4. A fairy can get this form by making people on Earth believe in fairies or magic. So without further delay, let's jump into this forgotten Winx Club game. At the start, Bloom introduces us to the game. She looks a little crunchy. Did the tricks put her through a magic trash compactor or something? Nah, it's likely because I'm playing the game in a bigger window than I originally intended. Hey, why's this game putting words in my mouth? So yeah, you're playing as yourself, and by some series of events, you wound up in the Winx Club universe. Bloom introduces you to the Love and Pet Shop in Gardenia. And wait a minute, what exactly does she know about me? That's ominous. Every version of Do You Believe It's is personalized. A new, totally ace student? I mean, you aren't wrong, but why do you need to introduce me by my sexuality? So the player is from Althea and is now visiting the Winx. I really like the dialogue in this game. It feels welcoming and even works some humor in it. Even the player feels like an actual character from the show. So you've been sent to the shop to find your true talent, which you hope to discover by hanging out with the Winx. You can't hang out with Bloom, but she acts as your guide and frequently talks to you about your progress. Get ready, because this game is a lot bigger than this opening would give the impression for. At the start, not all the Winx are available because the others are out traveling. They're gathering supplies for a party, but you don't know what the party is for yet. But you do have Tecna, Stella, and Flora to choose from. Let's start with one of my favorites. Techna in the technology room. She was always a standout character from the others. I mean, just look at her season one outfit. This is where you get a taste for what to expect throughout the rest of the adventure. Techna has a bunch of different colored batteries and needs you to fill them. So you play a tile matching game where you match the appropriate color to do so. There's no way to lose because the board just swaps itself around if you corner yourself. So it's fairly easy. A breath of fresh air compared to some of the later missions. Now let's visit Stella Stella Stella. She's the one who's obsessed with fashion. So realistically, she would probably dissipate into thin air at the very sight of me. But she's really nice to you in this. Since you're in the fashion room, her mission is a dress-up game. I can't even begin to describe how many Winx Club dress-up games there used to be, so it's only appropriate that there would be one in this. For now, you can dress her in basically anything. Check out this mess of an outfit. What's this character's backstory? Then you can take a picture of her and you get the option to print it out, in case you want to hang your weird Stella outfits on your fridge or something. Now let's visit Flora in the garden. As the one who's obsessed with gardening, her challenge is a gardening one. You can grow flowers and fruits by placing them in different sections of soil, then giving them whatever they ask for, Diner Dash style. According to her, flowers grow best in the shade. Um, are you sure about that, Miss Gardening Expert? Actually, some flowers do grow best in the shade. Just make sure you're planting a flower that does before trying it in real life. This minigame is easy in concept, but it's hard to tell what you're supposed to click on when you drag the water or fertilizer to the soil. If you even slightly miss your mark, it removes the item from your inventory. You have a limited amount of time, so it can get a little frustrating in later levels. And yes, I know exactly what this level looks like. Your yields did not meet the goal. Once you're done with those three, Bloom talks to you about finding your talent, then sends you away only for you to go back to her afterwards. She can't get rid of me that easily. 
Then she tells you that Musa has returned from her supplies gathering, so you head to see her next. Musa used to be my favorite, so you can imagine I was looking forward to her mission. She tells you it's a rhythm game, and you get to play the electric guitar. Now as someone who is laughably terrible at rhythm games, I was a little nervous about this. But who could possibly say no to Musa? Let's see how it is. Uh, is there supposed to be a game here or something? I mean, if this is all there is, I'll gladly take the easy win. But no, looking at the help menu shows that something is supposed to be here. Unfortunately, for a lot of modern websites, this is as far as the game will let you go. Now most sane people might have gone, oh, guess I'll find another game to make a video on, but I took this as a challenge. I was already invested, and I refused to let this little bug keep me from continuing. I couldn't let Musa down. I searched through many different sites, but the game wouldn't work on any of them. Things were looking bleak for me. It seemed my journey would soon be coming to an end. Would I ever see that lovely rhythm game, or would I be doomed to suffer in the world of bugs, only able to imagine what could have been? Thankfully, with the power of magic, faith, and friendship, I was able to download a really shady extension that allowed the game to run. It was filled with strange ads, and I'm not sure if I gave my computer a virus in the process, but we'll have Techna look at it later. For now, we have a rhythm game to try out. And I completely suck at it. Look at her silently judging me the entire time. She's at a loss. Once you beat it, Bloom says she has a surprise for you, so you go out in the hall and find the other girls are here. Hooray, more missions! So Roxy runs the pet room where the animals live, but she tells you to get lost because there aren't any pets here. Yet. So now let's go see Aisha. I'm sure her missions will be perfectly reasonable in the later stages. As we can see, she's in the potion room, so one can assume that her minigame will involve mixing concoctions. Every flask is divided into sections called parts. Aisha will tell you to mix an ingredient in one or two parts to fill a flask. You count as you fill the ingredients to the fill line, then you make the potion. Sounds easy enough, right? Oh, just you wait. Once you've met all the Winx girls, you go back to Bloom and learn some surprising news. We want you to join us in the Winx Club. Whoa. I don't know if I'd be a very good fit, but talk about a childhood dream come true. How many games do you get to canonically become a member of the Winx Club? This is the best game ever made. I don't even need to see the rest of it. But I have to because Bloom has yet another surprise. Apparently they were planning on letting you join before you even showed up and the party is being held in your honor. Now you get to choose an outfit and a name for yourself. I don't know why this option wasn't available from the beginning, but I guess you needed to prove your commitment before they let you in. This really is a joining the Winx Club simulator. So you can't type your name in, you have to select it from a long list of typical names. Let's see if they have mine. Oh look, there it is. I mean, I usually spell mine with an I, but I misspell my name in every game anyway, so it's in character. There was also a Lucy in the show. So then you get to play a dress-up game and make a Winx version of yourself. So what do you think? Aren't I gorgeous? What if I made this my new channel avatar? Just wait until the Lucy merch drops and this becomes a marketable plushie. So now that we're all dressed up, let's get this party started. So that was a great party, huh? Yeah, the game doesn't give you any indication that clicking on Bloom ends the party, so that kind of stinks. At least I'm beautiful. So Bloom sends you to Roxy, and you find out that the pets have arrived. Not only that, but you get one of your own. You hear that? We get an in-game version of Grace. Well, actually, it's named Goldie, but I guess it still starts with a G. I also love how bubbly they make your dialogue whenever you're referring to your pet. Is this game seriously suggesting that I talk like this? Because believe me, around animals, I sure do. So Goldie is this weird koala thing, and for its minigame, you have to click the meters for food, sleep, cleaning, and playtime. You fill the meters by remembering the correct sequence to click these icons in. It isn't too hard, and like with Tecna's mission, it's a breath of fresh air whenever you get to do this one. But afterwards, Bloom gets confrontational and demands you choose which of the girls is your favorite. Jeez, calm down, how could I possibly choose? You have to play them all to win the game, but for now, you have to select which path you want to follow. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I am terrible at rhythm games and will almost certainly live to regret it if I choose Musa, but I also enjoy suffering, so let's do her first. You learn that she's saying up a big concert and she needs you to play guitar in her band. She promises you a new guitar if you do good in rehearsal, so you have some motivation. She also tells you to strive for a perfect score, which is... <laughs> not happening. But no matter how you do, the song goes really hard. Sadly, you just might grow to hate it with how much you'll have to play it by the time the game is over.
This round is easy, especially since you only have to hit three keys, but enjoy the easiness while it lasts. Meanwhile, Bloom wants you to get flowers so she can decorate, but come on, I'm practicing for a big concert, I don't have time for your silly flower antics. Just cause her name is Bloom, I swear. So you head to Flower Girl and hear Musa jamming out on her new guitar. Then you do Flora's mission, and while it's probably a smart idea to take it slow and do a few flowers at a time, I'm overly ambitious and I consistently insist on doing as many as I can get away with. Do I make it harder for myself in the process? Yes, but I'm an official Winx member. I live on the edge. So you head to Musa to see the new guitar, and now you have to try it out with an extra keyboard key. This is where it gets a bit more challenging. Or not. I guess maybe we should- oh, it's working this time. Don't scare me like that. But as you can see, it took me a bit to find my footing when I started playing. Somehow, I still beat it. So the flowers get brighter and more colorful before you take them to bloom. Apparently, music is magical and can make the flowers more beautiful. If only real life had this kind of science. So you head back to Musa to rehearse some more and- oh, come on, are you kidding me? Once you beat it, Musa offers to play your favorite song. No way. We get to play Wood by Alice in Chains in a Winx Club game? But actually, you can't remember your favorite song for some reason. You play with Goldie and then meet Bloom on your way back to Musa. You blame your sudden memory loss on tiredness, so she sends you to Asia so you can make a potion that'll help you wake up. She could just as easily give you a cup of coffee, but whatever floats your boat. I love how she scolds you about your lack of sleep. Just remember that the Winx Club girls want you to get a good night's rest. You wouldn't want to disappoint them, would you? Once you mix the potion, you take it to Tecna so she can add the energy to it. Then it's another game of Winx Club Candy Crush. This is where you figure out that over the course of every girl's storyline, you have to play every other one's mission at least once. You'll get at least a little sick of some of them. Remember, there are seven whole storylines to get through. So once you're energized, Musa decides she wants you to suffer and forces you to play a song with six keyboard keys. I can just tell that every rhythm game expert is shivering at my horrifying playstyle. Thankfully, your score doesn't need to be too high just yet. But the concert is the next day, so you better be ready for it. When that day comes, as if on cue, it starts to rain. Which will force the event to be cancelled. Oh no. How horrible. I like that they add the little animation in the background. But since music is magic in this universe, you decide that if you jam out hard enough, you can magically dispel the storm. Can't argue with that logic. Personally, I'd just pay a visit to Marlin the Weather Wizard. The first song is easy, but there's another round immediately after it. This is where it starts to get difficult. Even though it only required four keys, I just couldn't get the hang of this one. My score kept falling short. Things were starting to look a little dour. After countless tries, I just couldn't get it right. I was beginning to think this would be the end of my journey. After how far I had come, all the friends I had made, and even after I had been given the honorary chance to become a full-fledged Winx Club member, I would have to give it all up. But I couldn't let Musa down. I had to dispel the storm and put on the concert if it was the last thing I did. So I turned around, went back, picked up the guitar, and gave it everything I had. It wasn't perfect, but I hit every possible note I could and put all my heart and soul into it. Giving it everything I had, I was finally able to get a score of- Oh, come on. Are you actually kidding me? Looks like it's time to bring out the heavy artillery. SpongeBob teaches typing, perfect game for learning keyboard etiquette. By completing the challenges, winning the tournament, and perfecting my posture, I was able to learn the science behind becoming a master of the keyboard. With these new skills, I was sure to blow this storm away. SpongeBob teaches typing, order now. Once you beat the stage, the storm goes away and you complete Musa's storyline. As a reward, you get the music dress for your character. But now that we're finished with Musa, we still have six girls in a final story to get through. After that absolute workout, I'd like to try something easy and mindless, so let's go with Stella. She has a new fashion site called Stellarium, and apparently Gardenia holds this contest where people vote for the best fashion site. So she gets the player to help her with the contest by dressing her in different outfits for votes. So you dress her in clothes that go together and try to reach a certain amount of votes. 
Then you get a running joke where Stella only calls herself a genius and ignores your effort. Feels great to go unnoticed. Then you hear Musa jamming out, so you design an outfit to go with her song. Some of the outfit combinations can be a little challenging to figure out, but not too hard. It's very straightforward. But unfortunately, when you bring the outfit to Musa, she makes you play a song with her. She really thrives off of torment. I think Riven might be a bad influence on her. Then, like with Musa, you do different missions with the other girls, continuing with Roxy and Goldie. Also, I don't know, but this potion mission is starting to seem a little picky. More on that later. But the story picks up when the website goes down, causing it to lose popularity. Ah yes, a realistic conflict in our magic fantasy show. Thankfully, we have Tecna to help get us back online. Eventually, your site wins the contest and you get Stella's dress. I like this one a lot, actually. It matches me. Moving on to Tecna, we get to play through her mission to become technology experts. Imagine taking the test for your IT certification and they just make you play Bejeweled. The story picks up when Tecna asks what your favorite color is, but you somehow can't remember it. Once again, they blame your memory loss on tiredness. Also, when you bring energy to Stella to spice up her outfit, you get some humorous dialogue when she thinks she's supposed to wear the batteries. But after that, Bloom asks you if anything strange has been happening lately. This is a bit of foreshadowing for what awaits us. Also... No the heck she hasn't been. This has gotta be the most intimidating message I've ever received in a video game. But yeah, she needs someone to be second guitar, and yeah, yeah. Let's get on with the torture. Wait, what? Oh my gosh. Saved by the weather. Then Tecna's plot revolves around fixing the blackout. You get enough energy to help Musa, then you have to play with her. Thankfully, it's only three keys. She's feeling merciful today. So you go around restoring energy with help from everyone, then the blackout gets out of hand. Bloom gives some foreshadowing by saying she thinks something really bad is about to happen. Then eventually... So with help from Flora's natural plan energy, you're able to play one last round of Cookie Jam and restore the power. So let's move on to Roxy's storyline. You play with Goldie a bit, even recording a song with Musa to play for him, then the story takes off when you speak to Tecna. The building's energy system is out of energy, so you suggest using Goldie to generate more because pets have a lot of energy. I mean, sometimes I think my dog's energy would be enough to keep the whole planet running, so it makes sense. But after using Goldie for such a means, he disappears. So the player and Roxy go looking for him and your dialogue becomes much more frantic. When you check with Stella, she suggests stressing her up to attract Goldie. But when it fails, you get this hilarious exchange. Oh. It. Didn't. Work. So after messing around with the others, you start coming to terms with the fact Goldie isn't coming back. However, Roxy tells you you just gotta believe. So it actually works and Goldie comes back. I wish that was all it took to bring a pet back in real life. According to Roxy, Goldie evolved, so I guess he's a Pokemon too. Your bond with him was so strong, it resulted in evolution. Scientists, I have a new theory. So you get your next dress and move on. Now this is where the game started to get a little iffy for me. I decided to try out the Asia storyline. And this one is notorious for causing many headaches and preventing countless players from beating the game. Let's find out why. It starts off as a typical potion-making sim, but it takes a turn when she introduces the concept of special potions. According to her, you have to be exact with them, but she doesn't elaborate on what this means. The help section for this minigame doesn't even mention it at all. You have to be incredibly specific when filling each ingredient to the fill line. If you're even half a pixel off, she won't accept it. You have to be so incredibly specific at times that you might even think the game is glitched. This is even harder than the rhythm game, and it asks way too much of the player. Though the trade-off is you get a hilarious story arc where you become an absolute buffoon. You go around helping the fairies, but they all need help with really simple tasks like cleaning, moving boxes, and picking up files. So you try to make a cleaning potion, a box moving potion, and a file pickup potion. In all honesty, this would probably be me in a fairy world, accurate representation. But after you help them and learn a powerful message about helping your friends, it's back to making the accursed concoctions. Then all of a sudden, the potions just stop working. So you need to make a special potion to reverse the effects of the spell that's causing this. You have to make more special potions, and yeah, it's a nightmare, but then the game pulls a dirty, rotten trick on you. Aisha tells you to mix one pink, one purple, and one green, but doesn't specify which ingredients they actually are. I will shamefully admit, it took me hours to figure this out. 
you have to use both of the correctly colored ingredient options. I would normally appreciate a trick like that, but not in a minigame as picky as this. It's way too easy to confuse it with a glitch. It's never fun when you can't trust the game you're playing to not be broken. So now we just have Flora left, and her game doesn't get too much harder as it goes. The temperature gets cold, you make it hot again, you replay all the other stages, and yeah. By now, the repetition has become a little apparent. I do appreciate that every character gets their own little story, though. But speaking of story, your newest instance of memory loss comes when you can't remember your favorite flower. To be honest, I forget mine all the time anyway. Sorry, Lilies. So once you finish with all the girls, you play with Goldie and speak to Bloom. She verifies you've lost your memory after asking you personal questions that you don't know the answers to. Great, I'm totally ready for my Shadow the Hedgehog arc. You go around doing things you like to regain your memory, so let's start with something that brings me agony and do the rhythm game. Okay then, let's not. Let's go see Stella. Yeah, we love Stella. So once you dress her up, you remember your favorite color. You also remember your favorite flower after planting with Flora. Apparently it's a tiny one that grows on a few mountains. Really makes you wonder how remarkable it could possibly be. So now let's get back to Musa. Yeah, I still suck at it, but once you beat it, you remember your favorite song is one you've heard a total of one time. Jeez, who hears a song once and makes it their favorite? I usually have to listen to a song at least five times before I even decide if I like it. So the air starts getting tense, and Bloom reads about a prophecy foretelling that a hero and her pet will save the day from a reality storm. Yeah, it's totally me. A reality storm is a storm that feeds on reality and devours worlds. Sure would hate to live in a universe where that's a regular concern. It's attacking Gardenia little by little and causing the inconsistencies throughout the plot. Bloom is also extremely pessimistic about this. And you fought off how many world-ending threats by now? Have a little faith. So you go around helping everyone fight the storm, and this is where things get messy. You need to make a dragon spear potion with Aisha, but she just flat out gives you the wrong instructions for making it. I'm not kidding. Many players claim they could never get past this part because of it. This is a really bad mistake especially considering how strict the potion-making segment is to begin with. Most people wouldn't even realize they're following the wrong recipe. They'll just think they aren't hitting the mark specifically enough. But thankfully, a few saviors have posted the real recipe online. It doesn't end up working in the story anyway. Once again, everyone is oblivious to you being the heroic fairy. All of the minigames are longer than usual, but not much more difficult. After you win a few, you speak to Bloom and she finally realizes you're the destined fairy after reading deeper into the prophecy. Had to go to page two of Google for that one. The reality storm gave the player amnesia to keep them from destroying it. I mean, there were probably at least several more effective options, but I'll take it. So not only do you get to be a Winx, you are literally the most powerful fairy in the Winx Club universe. How could I believe it without a proof? So when you finally decide to fight the storm, you get a fire dress like Bloom's. Then you go off to complete the remaining missions. I believe Ix. Do you believe Ix? New catchphrase. So now let's take on Musa's dreadful mission. To start, you need a 99% accuracy, and yeah, it's tormentious. But that just isn't enough. Once you beat it, you have to do another one. But look at this! Nobody's gonna hit that. I don't think it's possible to go from clicking the next button with the mouse to immediately switching to the keyboard and having your hands in perfect posture. This is a struggle to get through. I was at it for a long time, and I kid you not, my back started to hurt. I've never had that happen because of a game before. But after all that, you beat the storm and speak with Bloom again. Your memories come back and Bloom showers you with praise. Then you get a neat outfit. You go around talking to the other girls and they all refer to you like you're the greatest person they've ever known. It's honestly kind of flattering. Makes me feel like I actually did something. Aside from hurting my back in a rhythm game. The girls give you gifts as well. Goldie becomes your travel companion, Stella gives you a special diadem, Musa gives you her guitar as an eternal reminder of what you went through, Aisha gives you a perfume of your favorite flower, Techna gives you rare gems, because I mean, what else is she gonna give you, and Flora gives you your favorite flower that'll never wilt. Then you go back to Bloom and talk about all the adventures you're going to go on, but you decide to extend your stay at the shop because you love everyone so much. After some weird final lines, we're brought to the conclusion of Do You Believe Ix? So, what do we think? Do we believe Ix? I'd say so. While it is repetitive, the whole environment is welcoming and it feels really nice to explore this universe and befriend the characters in it. I can imagine a kid who's really into Winx Club would really enjoy this. All of the minigames are conceptually good, too. That being said, the difficulty is a problem. 
the potion segments needed to be completely reworked. The mechanic of being extremely precise is a picky and unreliable one. Not to mention, it's pretty bad that they just outright give you the wrong recipe for the final one. As hard of a time as the rhythm game gave me, I'm sure there are people out there who could ace it. Probably not the average kid in the target age range for this game, though. You need some serious keyboarding skills and lightning-fast fingers. As far as the storylines go, they're all fairly decent. It's amazing they were able to tell a whole story with the same few images. It still feels like a Winx Club plot, and the smaller stories make fine vehicles for taking you through each of the minigames. The game isn't bad, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you know what you're getting into. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go wreak havoc with my newly discovered fairy powers. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.